Danforth Plant Science Center is a non-for-profit research center that's dedicated to uh, research in the plant sciences. We are basic scientists that discover what genes do and how they give function to a plant, how they give it drought tolerance or disease resistance or more vitamins, and then implant the genetic information through biotechnology to give them the new instructions. Crop biotechnology is perhaps one of the most uh, precise forms of plant breeding that we could ever imagine. If a plant variety has 25 or 30,000 different genes and we add a single gene, the degree of scrutiny that that variety will receive is enormous. On the other hand, if I do crossbreeding and take 30,000 genes from one variety and 30,000 genes for another and then mix them together, it's not subjected to the kind of scrutiny that products of biotechnology are. I can, can say with great assuredness that the products of biotechnology that are on the market today are as safe, if not safer, than those varieties that they started with. What's been amazing to many of us is that we've seen advances that even were beyond our wildest expectations. We all knew it was theoretically possible, but to actually do it and deploy it into the field, and then at the end of four or five years, report that this has an advantage of increasing yields and reduce the use of agriculture chemicals by 50 million pounds a year. It's an astounding number. When we have that kind of breakthrough uh, from the first 10 years of a scientific field, one can expect much more in the future. We'll have plants that survive drought, we'll have plants that have more nutrition, and we'll have plants that have new uses and be able to benefit the farming community, the economics of farming, as well as environment. You know, we're challenged in this world with a certain amount of water, a certain amount of land. Uh, the only part that's not fixed are the number of people. And in the next 25 years, as we gain another three and a half to four billion people on this planet, the challenge is now to produce more food for those next three and a half or four billion people without using either more land or more water. And so the more we learn about how plants take up minerals and how they deposit them, the more we'll be able to use that information and that genetics to improve crops. We would very much like to see uh, foods that are more nutritious, that have more vitamins and more minerals in them. Those that are in, in third world countries where they have, uh, where they live on just one or two crops, cassava or rice, have a real handicap. And those crops are no notoriously poor in nutrition. I'd love to see a potato that has more protein or more vitamins in it. So those whose diets are built more around potatoes can have a healthier uh, living. We'd like to see those increased by genetic approaches and uh, help to feed people better while uh, helping them to feed themselves.